Hello and welcome to today's EMBN show where the headline is very much all about Scott's new voltage EMTB. Scott Voltage, this is an incredibly good looking bike. Um, shock inside the frame as a la Scott's recent style. Quite interesting. Yeah. This is a TQ bike, so HBR lightweight. 50. Yeah. I mean, the, the 900 tune version comes in at around about 18 kilos, but I think the, it's the low center of gravity which is achieved by having, you know, having everything down the bottom there. I think yeah. you still can access the shock, by the way, to... Yeah, it actually looks easy. It's easier than it looks, should I say, where you take off the bottom, and it's quite surprising. Mm. 155 rear travel, 160 fork. So relatively long travel tra trail bike, to full 29. Yeah. Um, full carbon, six models, um, internal battery, 360 watt hours, but there isn't the option of having a, a range extender on that bike as well. So the battery on this bike is permanently placed, so you can't actually take it in and out. Um, internal shock, as Don said, uh, two really good spec on this bike, 200 mil rotors. Um, I mean, in terms of looks, it's gotta be one of the best looking e-mountain bikes out there. Um, pretty slack as well, 63.9 head angle, 77 seat angle, 485 reach on a large. Now, I want to talk about this bike for many reasons. I think when you look, it's it's obviously, it's what's, what's mainly classed these days as a light e-mounted bike. I mean, how do you define light? Is it the weight? Is it the motor? I this mean... is going to blur more, <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing, in exactly. the future. We're going to see this grey area where uh, bikes are hopefully kind of modifiable, or at least the weights and everything plays out. Yeah, it's just like in the mountain bike industry has to categorize stuff. I mean, it's like, you know, a Peugeot 106 or an Audi RSX. They're both cars. One's an economy car, yeah. one's a high performance car, but you can't, obviously, no one calls them light cars or heavy cars, do they? Or do they? Oh, the, I mean, well, there is a category, I'm sure. Like, yeah, whatever. They are. I don't know. I mean, it's sometimes useful to explain to people because it's getting more technical, particularly with e bikes, where you have to know what you're looking at when you're looking at the numbers for head angles, you know, all the geometry plus the watt hours plus the newton meters. If you don't know any of that, mm -hmm. how are you going to know what it's about? Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. All right, this bike, this bike weighs in um, what was it? 18 kilos. Mm -hmm. 18 kilos. Stick a range extender on there. Well, actually, the bike, the, the tuned bike is about 19 kilos. Stick the range extender on it, it takes it to 20 kilos. And it's actually got XO Plus tires on it. By the time, you know, this is a 155, 160 mil bike. Yeah. You would expect it to be double down case and tires on there, which is going to add probably 300 grams either end to the bike. Yeah. That then takes the bike closer towards 21 kilos. And I'm going to come on to the reason for that in a minute, which I want to bring up. <laughs> But um, the mountain, I think the mountain bike industry, they, they, they're selling this bike, you know, it's from people coming from a mountain bike background. I think, I think we should, or maybe, I don't know what you think, we should quit worrying about this comparison with mountain bikes and think of it, it's just a, it's a fantastic bike in itself. Yeah. And don't, don't worry about it because it's going to handle different. It's going to be four times what a mountain bike is in terms of where you're going to go and how quickly you're going to do it. So I don't know. I just I just think just leave it. Just it's, it's a fantastic bike. Having said that, um, with this bike with the range extender and double down tires, it become then becomes a 21 kilo bike. And on last week's show, we had the Cannondale Motera SL, which is a full power bike weighing in at 19 kilos. We need, a, we need some sort of Venn diagram. A with, Venn diagram? With newton meters, <laughs> watt hours, and weight of, to, for all these bikes and see what sits somewhere in the middle. Well, you Venn away, Don. All right, I'll show uh, Get a compass. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? It's like, it, it's, you, you, you talked about blurring the lines earlier. It doesn't get more blurred than it is at the moment. I'm uh, sure it does. Uh -huh. I'm sure it can do. <laughs> <laughs> and before I finish, we're looking at these bikes. I'm just putting all these bikes in perspective. The, the, the new Q, which is like 150 mil travel. We had the Focus last week, 130, 140. I mean, that is very much like a cross country bike. Yeah. But then, you know, you're looking at these so-called lightweight bikes, which is a 360 watt hour battery in the down tube. Our Canyon Spectral Ons have got 720, which is double the battery capacity. It's got probably 40% more power. 
and weighs, I mean, the Ca Canyon Spectral with Sam 20 is about 21, 22 kilos. Yeah, interesting. So like, it's, I mean, it's, it's all up there for grabs, isn't it? Isn't it? Uh, another new bike this week, folks, is the new Flyer Uprock. Yeah, I don't know much about the brand, to be fair. Yeah, fill me in, Steve. Switzerland, Gruyere country. Um, I think the cool thing about the Uprock was, in fact, it used to be available in Panasonic motor, Panasonic GX Ultimate, which is a fantastic motor, very underrated motor. I'd probably put it in terms of power characteristics, a little bit, little bit quicker than than a Bosch CX Race. Wow. Uh, pretty compact. I mean, I think the Flyer bikes, I mean, a lot of you guys have actually commented that the Flyer Uprock is probably one of the nicest looking E-Mountain bikes up there. Very smooth lines. Uh, like I said, did I mention it comes from Gruyere country in Switzerland? You did, yeah. I did, oh yeah. <laughs> but this <laughs> is Bosch though, Bosch uh, Performance Line CX motor. 750 watt hour battery, can be expanded with a th the power more extended to a thousand watt hours. Yeah. Do you ever, and what's the most, I mean, what are you, 65, 70 kilos? 75-ish. Ooh, crikey, creeping up. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> do yeah. you ever, what's, what's the, I mean, you know, what, what kind of battery do you? I don't know. So now I've got a 900 wire and I've got my, is it 720? And I don't know, 900 is lovely to have, but I probably mm. don't need it most of the time. So I don't know is the answer to that. Yeah. Uh, just one last thing on, on the flyers, the Uprock X, 150 mil travel, and the prices, Uprock X 2.1 starts at 5999, and the prices go up to 7999. So not, you know, not too bad, I guess. Uh, and that's it for the news this week, folks. Right then, let's have a look at the gallery of exciting locations globally that you guys have been riding your bikes. And um, Donegal. Donegal. The wow. Atlantic coast on it's a very windy day amazing. in February. It's amazing. The bike is too dirty to show on the bike vault. Lol, but it's a super nice natural environment. It is, what a hell of a place. And this looks familiar. Yes, it's Cum. Now, Cum is in, uh, Cum is in the. It's just to the west of Blackwood. I've actually been here. Ah. It's a good, a good oh. fantastic place to ride bikes. And then South Black Forest, Holy Thomas. Holy look at the white What about tires. that then? Would you ride white tires? Um, not for me. But this is not about the bikes, actually. This, where in the world, cool places, about yeah, where you've been that. riding. Yeah, it's a, it's a the Black place. Forest on a white bike. I like your style. And then... Alaska. That's amazing. Matanuska Peak, Alaska. Getting into the high alpine for some ridge rides with Pilot the Dog. Timothy, this is. That's cool, isn't it? I expected Alaska to be a little, I mean. More snowy. I expected it to be more, more rocky, but. It uh, looks a bit like. Oh, uh, there you go, uh, there you go. Like That's, what bike is that? That is cool. I thought it would be way more. It's snowy. a hybridizer. Wow. Alaska wow. is the place to have an e bike. Tim, thanks so much for this. This is. Uh, wow. That's proper e mountain bike ter territory. And uh, good job on you, pilot. That's all I can say. Uh, that's it for cool places. And as it turns out, they really were cool places this week. Thank you so much. Got some more feedback for you, Steve. Okay. Before I know your burning questions, on our video about e-bike motor repair, uh, Jack Jar asked, uh, great information, Steve, but the USO is left off your list. Steve, mm. loads of our viewers in America. Mm -hmm. Is this service available in the US? Actually, in the comments, someone's answered this, Acceleronics. He said, I paid about $1,000 for a bro's uh, rebuild and upgrade by e-bike motor repair in Tennessee. The cost also included a new but used crankshaft because mine had corrosion damage. The rebuilt motor is quieter than when it was new, and I'm hoping the added seals and beefy parts will keep the motor alive longer than the rest of the bike. So fixed and upgraded, yeah, and that's a good idea. Yeah, that's it's true. I mean, what a fantastic uh, service that e-bike motor center do do. And it's great to know, you know, people worry about, oh, they need to have the latest and greatest thing, but like, same, same in motorcycles or anything really, it's just, but, Replay, it's kind of rebuilding and refurbishing things you've got, isn't it? I look forward to seeing you crack open a motor and refurbish it. <laughs> <laughs> you set your eyes out. And on the same video, uh, Gatanero says, now here comes a real interesting question. How about Shimano E8000 motor overhaul if it's wrecked? There's not a single shop in Germany that repairs those motors. They all switch to the new one. The, for 900 euros, mm -hmm. there's also people talking about the E8000 being replaced one for one by the EP8. Is that true? 
I don't know if it's true, but I do know that the e-bike motor centre um, and all its all its branches were looking at trying to to tackle Shimano Motors. They are the, it's the one motor they don't do. You know, they do everything. They do Bosch, they do Bros, they do Yamaha, they do TQs, they do Bafangs, they do the whole shebang. But Shimano is not on their list, I'm afraid, oh. at the moment. But I think they are working on it. Okay, bike fault. Uh, I'm loving the shallow depth of field with this shot. It's a uh, YT decoy. 2024. Brand spanking. Pan's bike in Poland. Few improvements immediately after purchase. Zeb Select 170mm uh, fork. Magira MT5 brakes. What do you think's the best travel for an e mountain bike? Um, I find around 160, 170 is my preferred area, mm -hmm. I'm mm. guessing. Mm. 170 actually, really, I suppose. Mm. I don't mind having that extra yeah. foul. And what's your thoughts on uh, the nicer, super nice of this bike? I think that's super nice. I think that is a nice YT. It is, and I think it's a really nice photograph as well. Uh, this next up is a Bulls in yeah. Sycamore Canyon, Thousand Oaks, California. I don't know, sunk it in the creek. Okay, and one last ride before the rains, I yeah. Think, do you know what? I hear that from Joey Carlo that he's been sinking it in the creek. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yep. Yeah. He needs to be careful about that. He does need to. Yeah. <laughs> uh, otherwise, and then that's a nice shot. And then uh, this is D. Andre. In uh, and California again. Hybridizer sand. Do you know what? Hybridizers are increasingly getting into the bike park. Yeah, interesting. San oh. Dimas, California. California, open to e-bikes, obviously. Mm. Uh, SRAM XO axis transmission and the drop post. As you see, I did custom yellow paint on the swing arm. Mm. Look at that. Go on then, where are you going with this? Uh, super nice. Super nice. Uh, and then next up, oh, Cantor. I mean, I maybe went too early. <laughs> Because, look where it is, it's James on oh, the Recon. That's crazy! My neck of the woods. Have you, James? I've filmed on the Recon, on my version of it. I prefer my version of it. James, bike. has the Don inspired you to both the bike and, I mean... Actually, I really like, I've got the Roxxon one. Oh man, However, that black looks amazing! It does, with the Kashima, looks very What? Nice. I've not even seen that bike. Is that, no. is that a stock bike? So I thought I had the nicest one, but now I'm not <laughs> sure. I mean, James, I'd like to see that bike side on. Can you send us another shot of that bike? please with a clean background yeah that bike looks really cool like I've that got a place for it as well because it's so steep to climb up the reef i need to get there are these custom canyon graphics then on I here they are, i can i've not seen that bike on the on james, the website or in the catalog james there's only only one way to go with that and that is a super nice thanks so much folks for sending in your very cool bikes Well, I think we leave it to the king of social to take us through the social. <laughs> is that me? Yeah, it is you. Uh, you're this... always on the so you're always on Instagram. Oh, well, sometimes. This... Actually, while I'm, while I'm on the, sorry to interrupt Go you. Go on. Uh, I did see you out in your new propane. Yes, been enjoying that. 170 mil travel. Yeah, SRAM power mm. train. Mm. Uh, enjoying the coast ship. Trying to learn, get mm. the grips of how to use that, when to use it. Handy on switchbacks. There's a few, I thought I'd maybe use it more, but when you when you do use it, it is sort of um, it very amazing to see the technology helping you out. Where There's one trail where there's a horrible steep chute to a horrible uphill mm -hmm. where on a normal bike, yeah. I virtually have to get off and push it over time. And? Double click, away I go. Yeah, really good. Uh, anyway, on social. Um, I've seen this one. <laughs> uh, you've probably seen this one going oh, around God. from Steel City Mountain Biker. Yeah. That must be filmed on a 360 camera of someone going over the wall. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, yeah. Are they on the way back from the pub? Uh, <laughs> Steve Pete has been hanging out with Danny McCaskill. They do that sometimes, don't they? What? hang out and do cool stuff on e-bikes. They do. That sounds like fun. Uh, I mean, the pair of them are just mad for it, aren't they, really? And then um, Josh Bryceland, and we've been talking about the Cannondale Matera SL. Now, I think the launch for this bike was out in Portugal. Bryceland is all over this bike. Uh, Throws it around like he used to, yeah. I think he suits that kind of style of bike. Yeah, it? you know, it's 20 it? kilos, it's full power, 600 watt hour battery on there, 19 kilos. Yeah. What a banger. That's almost it for this week's show. But before we go, let's have a look at some EMBN community stuff uh, where we recently asked you all, what does your average EMTB ride look like? 
look like? A lot of you got involved. And it looks like the majority of you spend your time on local single track or trail centers with 61% yeah. riding single track. I would definitely fall in that category, but this is big, 28.7%. Backcountry adventure. That's quite a higher than I would expect it. It is, it is. I mean, that's the kind of riding I like doing. Yeah, I love, I love doing it. Not, it's it's not, not what I do every week. Not there is much backcountry in the UK compared to other parts of the world. No, that's uh, true. But that's, thanks for getting involved, folks. That's it for this week's EMBN show. Uh, on the channel this week, we're actually visiting a white demo day, a fantastic place to go to to try out different motors, batteries, sizing, colors, specifications, prices. So Anna has been at a white demo event to take you through the process of choosing the right bike. Thanks for joining us.